In this MemGPT crash course, you will learn from the creators of MemGPT, Vivian and Charles, on five important topics. One, brief overview of MemGPT code base. Two, easiest way to run MemGPT as a Discord bot. Three, MemGPT CLI setup and basic chat demo. Four, how to use MemGPT to chat with documents. And finally, five, running MemGPT with local LLMs without OpenAI. Okay, so to give you a very high-level idea of how the code is structured, basically the main MemGPT uh, code base is inside agent.py, and everything is happening effectively inside async agent. And what happens is you have the step function, and every time the user sends a message, this is what gets called. So there's a call that goes to step, and you can see in the comments here, there's basically a a few different steps, you first append the user message to the internal message queue. Then you run it through OpenAI's API or like a local language model API to get back a response. So you have the messages, you pass it to the language model, you get the assistant reply. And another thing we'll go over is if you want to add your own functions to MemGPT. So for example, you want to add the functionality for MemGPT to use a new tool you basically need to touch the code in only a few places. Um, you need to update the available functions bank here. So you can see here that there's actually a lot of functions here, many more than MGPT will run by default. Some of these are aliases for the same function. So like conversation search is just the same thing as recall memory search, just with a different name. But to give you an example of a function that you could add, we have this function here called message chat GPT. This isn't in the paper, this isn't enabled by default, but this is a function that allows MemGPT itself to call ChatGPT or call GPT 3.5, basically. And when we give MemGPT this function, it's we tell it that it can use uh, it can basically use ChatGPT to answer questions for it. So if it gets stuck, it can send a request to ChatGPT. And to actually implement that in the agent class itself, you add a new function. So we can see here the actual call to message ChatGPT is itself like a little. Um, asynchronous API call. And it has some concatenated string here that you can kind of see the preview. It starts with, you are a helpful assistant, keep your responses short, something like that. Passes the message that um, MemGPT wanted to message ChatGPT with. And yeah, that's the basic way you would add a new function. So I, I know some people on GitHub are asking for adding functions to allow MemGPT to write to a, a Word document, for example. This is how you would implement it. You would add a new function that does that. And another thing that I think some people are interested in is how memory works. So in the base repo, memory is just held inside Python objects. Um, it's still persistent. So when you type save, it will save it out to a file. But if you want to actually implement a database, so you don't have to do saves, but memory is synced to a database, what you would have to do is you basically create a new archival memory subclass or a new recall memory subclass, depending on what uh, which one you want to replace. You can do both. And you would call it something like database archival memory. And you, all you really do is you just replace the insert, you replace the insert and the search um, with code that's specific to inserting and searching over your database. And that's pretty much it. And then you just, it's pretty straightforward to hook it in um, or to instant, to, when you create a new MGPT class to use these new memory function are these new memory classes that you created and then make sure uh, after you create a new memory function you update the persist you create a new persistence manager which just includes like the classes for recall memory and archival memory all right and then you update those classes and then you yeah. hand memgpt uh the new persistence manager all right so the easiest way to get started with memgpt is actually with the discord bot um, this doesn't involve you installing or downloading any code. You can just use it directly as long as you have a Discord account and an OpenAI API key. So the first thing you want to do, I guess if you just tag MemGPT bot, it'll give you some instructions on how to set things up. Uh, the first thing you want to do is set up a profile. And yeah, this is basically your user profile. So what MemGPT knows about you. So maybe say, I need this Charles. I'm a PhD student at UC Berkeley. Oops. <laughs> uh, I really like the book for long walks. I have a great time around the lake. 
around the lake. Yeah, sure. Okay. So that was a story. So if we create any future bots with MGBT, uh, whether the Discord bot, it'll use this information to seed the bot. Then we want to create our, or we want to link our OpenAI key. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. So basically you just paste your OpenAI key from OpenAI. It has to have GPT-4 access. Um, we have some more instructions on how to make sure you have that on the Discord. But at this point now we can uh, create a bot. Actually, an important thing to do here is to make sure that in your settings, um, you go to privacy settings and make sure that you're allowing direct messages from uh, other members in the server, which is MemGPT bot. Yeah. So once you say crave, now you get to basically um, set up your bot. So you can either set it up with some default personas that we have. There's a very basic one. There's one that has a little bit more text in it. And then you can also just write your own. But for the purposes of this, we'll use one of the defaults. And now you can see it's just confirming that everything is ready to go. Um, yeah, we have our, our own profile here. And then we also have the persona that was that's our default. You can always just change this, make it your own. And once we hit confirm, see that says you successfully created your AI chatbot. They'll message you soon. And at this point, you hop over to your DMs. All right, so we see that we just got a new message from MTPT bot. And yeah, it's basically saying, hey, nice to meet you. Um, it's using the information that we gave it. So it's saying, uh, he had, I heard you enjoy long walks by the lake. And there's a few things we can do here now. So we can obviously just chat with it. So we could say something like, hey, did you know today was my birthday? Don't forget to celebrate it next time. Something like this. So this should definitely trigger like a memory event, right? Um, so you can see that... It's cooking. Yeah. So you can see that MemGPT bot immediately identifies that this is some important information we need to store. So it's going to stick in memory. And we can always actually check the status of our memory using the memory command. So if we run memory, it's going to dump what's inside the current bot's memory. And you see it just added a new line for our birthday. Um, there's some other things we can do too. Uh, you'll notice that in the chat, we can see both like the inner thoughts of the bot as well as the message and the functions it's running. So if we don't want to see some of these things, like you just want to kind of see the messages that are running, we can always toggle the functions off. So you can do type functions. It will, oh, I guess it might, you might have to do this twice, but yeah, you can tur turn it off and that means you won't see the function messages anymore. And similarly, if you don't want to see the inner thoughts, you can just turn it off. <laughs> you have to toggle it, I guess, an extra time, but you can turn it off and now, Let's say something else. What was the last thing we said to the bot? We said it was our birthday. Oh, so happy birthday. So we yeah. could change its memory, say it's Vivian instead of Charles. Yeah, thank you for the birthday wishes. Oops. <laughs> wishes. Actually, my name is Vivian. Uh, Charles. Sure, where you got that info? In this chat log, we're only going to see final messages that come out. We won't see the function calls, we won't see the inner, th inner thoughts. So it'll make the chat a lot cleaner, but you obviously won't really be able to see what's happening under the hood and see that all all we're seeing in the chat now is, hey, I'm sorry about, sorry for the confusion. Yeah. And then we can dump the memory. All right. And yeah, we see that behind the scenes, it updated the memory. And if at any point you want to kind of start over, you can always like create a new bot. And if you create a new bot, then the old bot will still be saved and you can just go back to it with select. So right now we just have these IDs. We're going to improve this shortly so you can kind of identify which bot is which, but it's chronological order. So basically the last bot or the last number on the list is the most recent bot you created. And the further you go up, it's like um, older bots. Yeah, so you see we the most recent one is right here. And if we ever want to switch to a different one, we can just uh, select it, yeah. Okay, so to get memgpt to run on the command line, we first install the pymemgpt package. You can run memgpt as a simple chatbot. Uh, we can configure it to use GPT-4, use this persona, um, and have this built-in CSPHD uh, user profile. And then we'll insert nothing into memgpt's archival memory because we're using it as a chatbot. And now we can start conversing with memgpt.
And now it says, oh, hello, Chad, welcome. Um, so I can correct MumGPT. I can say, hey, my name is Vivian, not Chad. And then what MumGPT, do, what MumGPT will do is take this uh, response and then it will update its internal memory with uh, replacing first name being Chad to first name being Vivian. And then it'll say, oh, I'm sorry for calling you Chad. And then after this, what I can do is I can exit. And when I exit, it'll save a transcript of this chat or a checkpoint to this uh, folder here. And when I run memgpt again, it'll say, oh, we found a configuration file. Would you like to load it in? Yes. And then it'll say, we also found in a, we also found a checkpoint. Would you like to load that in? If you say yes, it'll load in the checkpoint um, from the transcript of the chat that we just saved. And now memgpt will still have within its memory the fact that my name is Vivian and not Chad. So we can test that by asking it, what is my name? So actually, if we just look at its internal monologue, it says understanding Vivian's perspective on this. So it already knows my name is Vivian. Here I'll have memgpt use doc. And then it'll ask us what we would like to use. So I have a custom persona here called Vivian. Uh, you can make your own by adding text files to the directory specified here. It'll ask you if you want to preload anything into MemGPT's archival memory. And I'll say yes, I want to upload a folder or file. And let's see, maybe I want to upload MemGPT's paper. And it'll ask us if we want to compute embeddings. We'll say yes, and then it will compute the embeddings over one file. And now it'll be loaded into MemGPT's uh, archival memory. And then we can start asking MemGPT, Hey, can you tell me what a virtual context is? Check your archival memory. And then hit enter. So first it'll keep track of this task. And then it'll start querying archival memory with what a virtual context is. And the definition of a virtual context appears inside the MemGPT paper that I fed to MemGPT. And it says, oh, we got some results about what a virtual context is. It'll digest those results. What is your answer? Looks like you got cut off a little early. Forgot to send a message. So we'll ask it to send a message. Mm -hmm. Great limited. Okay. And then now it'll output an answer saying, oh, the concept of virtual context refers to a concept utilized by AI models like myself. And this is like pulling stuff that uh, it got from the paper text. You can pause and read its answer. But um, I guess this demo goes to show that, you know, if MemGPT is, it's like a natural language interface. So you can be very explicit with it. So if it's not finding things in its archival memory, you can tell it to search your archival memory for an answer to my question. If it gets to send you a message, you can say, what was the answer you, want to, you wanted to send me? Yeah, so now we're going to go through a brief example of how you can run MemGPT with local language models. So not routing to OpenAI, but instead of routing to your own model that you're hosting somewhere. So for this example, we're using um, TextGen WebUI, and we're going to use the... Uh, uh, Dolphin 2.1 Mistral model. So what you're looking at right now is the kind of model loading screen for WebUI. You don't have to use WebUI for this. This is just uh, what we're using as an example because it's quite popular. Um, but yeah, we, we already downloaded and installed WebUI and then we also already downloaded the model. And yeah, so that's why we can see it. Here we're just going to uh, make sure that we have enough chip use space here. Hit load. Now, so loading might take a few minutes or longer, depending on how large of a model you're loading. Um, and yeah, we're running this on a server and we forwarded the port 7861 for the web application, but the actual streaming, or not, sorry, not the streaming, the actual API for the model is, we also forwarded that port that's on 500, or sorry, on 5,000. Oh. Yeah, so depending on what backend you're using, if you're using it on like running it on run pod or something, these instructions will be different. But the key idea is to basically just host the model somewhere as a, on a web server. And once we've done that, then that's yeah, so one, once we've done that, all we need to do to uh, make it so that MemGPT will 
launch request to this backend instead of OpenAI. We just need to do two things. We need to set the um, OpenAI API base variable to the basically just where the web server is located. In our case, we forwarded it to localhost on port 5000. And then the second thing we need to do is set backend type to web UI. So, yeah. And then just to demonstrate that, or make extra clear that we're not using OpenAI anymore, we're going to turn off the API key that we had earlier, so it's no longer visible to MemGPT. Beautiful. Yeah. So you can see, you can use these much smaller models. Like this, so this is just a 7 billion parameter model, and you still can get some reasonable um, function usage. So things don't completely break. This is still a highly experimental. This is something we just added and we're working working pretty hard to make this a lot more stable. Um, so yeah, we welcome you to try it out. And if you try it out, uh, please let us know like what issues you run into, what models you think work best in the GitHub issue that we, or the GitHub discussion that we have open.